I've got two handheld radios here. One is on two meters and the other one is on 70 centimeters. If I had just one outdoor antenna, how would I go about connecting these two? So if they've got separate bands, how would I combine the two antennas so that I could just operate off the one single antenna? How about this for another scenario? So I've got this quad band radio. This is a FT8900, a Yaesu. It does 10 meters, six meters, two meters and 70 centimeters, but it only has one antenna connector. So how would I connect this to multiple antennas? That's where devices such as these come in. These are known as diplexes. So a two port is known as a diplexer and a three port is known as a triplexer, so three. Uh, sometimes you'll see that they are commonly labeled duplexer, which is incorrect because these are a uh, using splitting two out of bands. Duplexes are in band devices, these are out of band devices. So there is a common port here and there is a frequency range ports on the bottom here. This one's got 1.3 to 225 megahertz, so uh, HF and VHF. And then 350 to 540, which is UHF. The triplexer is slightly different. That's got a common port, a mixed port, 1.6 megs to 60 megahertz here on the first connector with a PL259. The next port is VHF 110 to 170. That's got a PL259 and then 300 to 950 megahertz and that is a N connector. So in this scenario, using say this triplexer, I can connect six meter, uh, to a six meter antenna or radio. I can connect to a two meter antenna or radio, and I can connect to a 70 centimeter UHF antenna or radio. So these work both ways. I can connect here, this mix port, I can connect off to one radio, such as my FT8900 here. I can connect that straight into the mix, and then I can connect this to three separate antennas, six, two meters, and 70 centimeters. And in actual fact, I run one of these in my car, and then I've got a separate one which also does HF for the 10 meter side of things as well. Or I could do it the other way around if I had two radios. So I had my two meter, let's turn on my two meter handheld here again, or my 70 centimeter handheld. And I can then connect this handheld to VHF and this handheld to the UHF port and connect it to just one antenna. And I can do that without blowing the radio up. You'll see that on the front of the, in this case, the triplexer, there are some specifications. So it's got an impedance, 50 ohms. Then we've got isolation, 60 dB. And we'll come back to isolation in a minute. It's got SWR. Then we've got a loss. So when you go through a device such as this with anything with RF, you're gonna have some sort of loss. Isolation, that's the most important thing. What that is measuring is the isolation in dB between each port, and it is saying that it is 60 dB. So if we have a look at some maths here, and we'll use a nice round figure here, we'll go 100, 100 watts, that is equal to 50 dBm. So we can say that if this has an isolation of 60 dB, so let's go minus 60 dB, that means that if we pump 100 watts here into say port one, uh, say on six meters or HF, we pump in 100 watts, we can expect to measure that signal on that frequency on this second port or indeed the third port at uh, no more than minus 10, if that makes sense, because you've got 50 dB of power. If you take 50 dB away, then you've got zero dBm. And then obviously you've got another 10 dB because you've got 60, so that leaves you with minus 10 dBm. And in a power sense, minus 10 dBm equals 0 0.0001 of a watt, or around about 100 uh, micro watts. Is that how we do micro? 100 micro watts. So this power level here, that's not gonna damage any uh, radio. That's still a quite a high level. You, you actually look at this and you look at the, the wattage and you think, oh, that's pretty low. That's actually a relatively high level. And some radios, you will get a bit of, um, 
interference or desensing when you put in that much power. If say I've got a two meter radio here on the second port, when I'm transmitting 100 watts on the first port, I might end up uh, trying to receive a signal here on the second port and it might just get uh, a little bit noisy or the signal might disappear briefly if I'm transmitting on the other port. It all depends on what receiver you've actually got on that second port. If you've got say a cheap handheld or something, then it's definitely gonna wipe it out. So I've just put the triplexer in here into my 7610 on six meters. And then I've also got my 9700 here on two meters and also listening on 70 centimeters at the same time. So if I transmit here at 100 watts in using my 7610, which is connected to the six meter port of the triplexer, and let's just have a look at this repeater and see what happens when I transmit. And see how there, see how the OVF light comes up and see how waterfall, let me see if I can zoom in on this waterfall. See how we pick up some noise there on the waterfall. So there is a little bit of bleed over into this radio from this one running 100 watts. If we actually back the power off, let's go back to 50 watts and see if it does it. It's not as bad, it's still there, but not as bad. But it can impede some signals. Let's just have a listen to another repeater here. And you can hear that crackle. So whilst we still have quite a lot of isolation, sometimes you'll still get a little bleed through over into another radio. But in any case, in most cases, this is going to be enough for us to uh, work with and we're not going to have too many issues at least with blowing the radio up because that's the main thing we don't want to damage the radio. Now for some things uh, such as an SDR or here's a good example that I've got here, the Tiny SA, the Tiny SA actually has a measurement here where it says plus six dBm of RF. So plus six, so we're about 16 dB off that. So it's gonna be safe for this. So you could say that if it's safe for this, it's gonna be safe for your receiver as well. And this is what it looks like inside. All it is, is a tuned LC circuit, inductors and capacitors. So there you go, you could see there that there's a couple of coils, there's a couple of uh, matching coils here, a couple of capacitors for each side. So that basically what this is going to do is this port here is going to be tuned to pass everything between these frequencies. So that's what this tuning is for. And then it's going to reject everything that is higher than that frequency. So you could think of it as it's actually a low pass filter here on this side and a high pass filter here on the other side. The isolation, again, is between the two ports here. Uh, not between the common, but between the two ports. Now, when we're running, say, two antennas, it's not really gonna be that much of a problem, but when we're running two radios, we wanna make sure that those two radios are not going to uh, feed back into the other. So, one thing I want to do now is I want to demonstrate and show you what this looks like on a spectrum analyzer and, the, and we'll measure the isolation to make sure that it is 60 dB. I've connected the two port diplexer and I've connected it to the first port, which is 1.3 megs to 225. So we've just got a center frequency here of 250 megahertz and a span of 250 megahertz. So we're sitting here at about 125 megahertz or so and then here we will be what 375 megahertz so what we want to do is we can move this uh, cursor around and we can see what our isolation is so if we move this cursor now the the port the next port as you can see so if i go back up here you can see that it starts to roll off up here at around about say 3 dB, that's about the that's about the roll off point. So 215 megahertz it starts to roll off. So by the time you get to probably 225, as it specifies, it's yeah it's starting to to really roll down there. So it's probably not quite to 225, but definitely for amateur frequencies, if we go all the way back here to 140 megahertz, I haven't calibrated it for uh, this section of the, uh, we can get a more accurate measurement, but it's only about half a dB, but it's, as you can see there, it's got a nice flat top. So if we come down now down to here, you can see that the there's a massive dip down in here at 300 megahertz, that's at minus 60. 
So what we want to do is we want to just progress this forward and let's go now a center frequency of 350 megahertz. And we can now go and have a look back down at 350, which is our second port, our second port of the, uh, the diplexer. And we've got about minus 57. So that's pretty close to the 60 dB of isolation. It starts to roll up here a little bit as we get towards UHF. So 70 centimeters there, so 440 megahertz, it's about minus 50. So remember if we were pumping in 100 watts on one side, we're now getting zero dBm on the other side. And we can keep rolling forward here and it's pretty flat if we go a little bit further up in frequency. Let's have a center frequency of 450 megahertz. And you can see that there's sort of a couple of ripples and bumps, but for the most part, it's sitting at around about 50 dB, 40, 47, 50 dB. Now, if I go back to my original center frequency of 250 megahertz, if I change the port over now to the UHF side, now it's showing the opposite. So we've now got a high pass filter. So if we go up here, there's our 350 megahertz pass up there, about a dB. Again, I haven't calibrated it properly, so just ignore that number for now, but you can see that that's the flat top of it. And we move down towards VHF. So there's two meters. So two meters is sitting nicely in about uh, minus 66. So this is, our, this is our isolation figure. You'll see there that it keeps on rolling off the further down that it goes. So if I take this a step further and I set my spectrum analyzer to 146500, you can see there that I'm transmitting now using my handheld, I'm transmitting five watts in. We're measuring a level around about 35 dBm there on the scale. So now if I switch over to measure rather than through the diplexer, if I measure the other port, the UHF port, and I transmit, Notice you can't see anything at all, and I actually have to drop my level right down there to right down low to actually see anything. So I use my triplexer to connect it to my Diamond V2000 outside, which is a 6, 2, and 70 antenna. So then I can listen on 2 and 70 on one radio and operate on 6 meters on the other radio.